We'd like to welcome you to the 45th annual Gardner Angus Ranch uh, April sale on April 6, 2024. Seems like just yesterday was our very first sale and on the first Saturday in April in 1980. And uh, it's been a blast all these years and it goes so quickly and we try to savor it and celebrate it. And uh, when I think of Henry and Nan Gardner and I think of all the effort that they put into these sales and showing us how to do what we do and how we love doing it, working together. And we have our days just like you do. We're so very excited to bring you these cattle and, and celebrate the cattle. When I think of the 400 plus bulls that'll be selling and think about where they rank within the Angus breed for the traits of merit. You know, it's Henry 101 once again with uh, the Cavinese being 11 in the top 15% of the Angus breed. Yet, uh, you know, where growth traits are in the top 10% of the breed and, and, you know, when we celebrate beef, we think about the taste of beef. And so when we look at those bulls being in the top 2% of the Angus breed for marbling, yet also in the top 10% of the breed for ribeye, while simultaneously not being out of bounds for stature and having the maternal function in their makeup to, to replicate the process. I mean, that's what mom and dad taught us to do. And with the tools we have today, uh, better than ever before, when you look at database systems with uh, American Angus Association and the genetic predictions, and, and uh, we look at the genomics and we look at method genetics, which allows us to benchmark with all of you, our commercial customers. This is really fun. It's really good. And it really works. And I think so often we often get pigeonholed into this type of breeder, that type of breeder. But I uh, remembered recently a phrase that dad used to always talk about that that really is what we try to do and, and uh, are proud to be able to do, and that's multi-trade excellence. And so when we, we cross on over into the, to the donor section of it, I think it's really fun to celebrate the fact that these, these donors in the top 1% of the breed for marbling, again, pounds pay the bills, quality pounds pay more bills. And, uh, you know, that's how pounds of beef are differentiated is with that marbling. But when you look at where they rank within the breed for, for growth and for the methogenetics, all encompassing index of ROI uh, in the top 8% of the entire method database, uh, we're very comfortable that those cattle, when you look at their maternal pounds index and you look at their quality uh, QPI index, these cattle will function very, very well. And then we move on over into the cows and, and uh, they're very youthful. Uh, the majority of these cows are three years of age and we're excited about the three and one females that we're going to sell a cow with a heifer calf and bred back. And then ultimately uh, finishing up with the bred heifers. And again, uh, those heifers are in the upper percentile for the Angus breed for the traits of merit. Always a special feature in our April sale are, are the home raised commercial heifers that we're able to sell. And we sell those in the middle of the sale. Uh, between the bulls and the heifers because and the females because many of our bull buyers uh, are interested in those heifers but they need to get home and get back to work and so uh, those 275 plus uh, heifers that we will sell they're all bred to calf in the the fall um, primarily September of 2024 uh, the majority of those are uh, sexed fetal sex by ransom and coal for the most part so you'll know uh, what's inside of those females but they're indexed they're lauded in groups of 10 for the most part and they're in roi order by group and so we're very excited about those cattle they have a great deal of value and oftentimes we get asked about where did those cattle come from and and i talked about henry and nan and i think back to to my grandfather ralph gardner but uh, in the early 1930s he got his very first angus cattle and i'm often reminded of the story as a kid growing up, uh, you know, I'm this Angus nerd and I've got Angus fever and I go, hey, dad, did, did Ralph, did granddad get Angus cattle because he knew they had calving knees and they were real maternal, they were real functional in range environments and of course they had super meat quality. He said, oh, heavens no. He was a contrarian and uh, everybody else had Hereford so he got Angus. So. Uh, I don't know if you call it uh, providence or uh, just good fortune, but Ralph Gardner got those first 
commercial Angus cows in 1930s. So then you fast forward uh, 33 years later, they kept building on those cattle. And Henry Gardner made the decision to be total AI uh, in the year 1964. And so the commercial cattle today in our cow herd are all the exact same as our registered cow herd, but they're the descendants of, of Ralph Gardner's cows that Henry AI'd all through those years. And, and we as a family have continued to do so. I think another thing that's exciting and fun, uh, I often joke that we, uh, we put on programs and a lot of times we put on programs because I want to learn something, you know, and I think everybody else does too. And, you know, I've taken a little bit of heat from some of my friends. And when we talk about the word sustainability, it doesn't need to be a, a, a word that incites uh, anything other than let's talk about it. I mean, some people, I, I heard a friend of mine say, I just hate that word. I said, well, we're going to talk about it. We're going to engage in it. You know, I have a son that went to the University of Kansas, and I still, with my upbringing and, and my training and everything, it, it's hard for me to sometimes to, to look at a Jayhawk and not feel uncomfortable. But now that I know a few more of them, and now that I've been at that table, uh, they're good people too. So I think when we live in the world, we have to be a part of the world. And I'm so excited to have our good friend, Shannon Wharton, who has just from the ground up, uh, had a passion for beef, came from Pennsylvania, drove a truck at, at Brookovers because she wanted to get involved. She knows every aspect of the business. And I think what's so exciting about Shannon is that uh, she made the commitment and got on the, uh, the round table of sustainability. And, you know, so she's, a voice for us in agriculture, and especially animal agriculture, talking to these large corporations. And, and if we don't want to have top down telling us how to do, we have to tell our story. We have a very good story. We're very good at what we do, but we need to share that and talk together with others. And I think one of the things when you think back to certified Angus beef and Mick Colvin and and that being designed, Dick Spader, John Crouch, dad was fortunate to be on the board when they started that certified Angus beef. And here we are, you know, 1978 to 2024, do the math. But all these years later, it, it, it is truly an American success story and more importantly, an American beef success story. And certified Angus beef has helped all of us in the beef industry pay our bills with quality. So why do they have Dr. Kirsten Nichols as their sustainability expert. Number one, I've had the good fortune to hear our, her on a couple of programs. She's quick, she's smart, she's down to earth. You know, my friend John Grimes told me about what her PhD study was, and I won't get this quite right, but I mean, she's a beautiful young lady, but uh, she did this brutal study uh, about cattle and feedlot mud at Ohio State University, and she was out there getting all these measurements, and so, Oh, I'm probably jaded in my views. And I mean, you're probably not gonna make it in this world if you don't get dirty. And uh, Kirsten will present herself very well, but I'm very proud to share with you that she's gotten dirty and just worked as hard or harder than any of us. But she is such a professional and she is so engaged with helping us. And so back to Certified Angus Beef, why did Certified Angus Beef do that? They're taking care of their customers. Our customers are their customers. And so they're ensuring that they know that we're raising the safest, healthiest, greatest tasting beef in the world. And so when we have people like this representing us with the world, that's pretty good, that's pretty cool. And so we're going to learn from that and we're going to learn that we're doing a pretty good job and we can get better. But I think if you see this, I would like you to come with a question and ask about it because you know, I don't pretend I have all the answers. Uh, we're going to have Shannon uh, ask the questions from the producer standpoint and, and Kirsten's going to answer a lot of them, but it's going to be fun. And so uh, 45 years and I've been to each and every one of them, if you can imagine that. And it just seems like yesterday, but I'm looking forward to the next 45 years. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that we're living in the greatest time ever. And I say that every day, but we're living in the greatest time ever for beef cattle markets. It's bullish, bullish, bullish. Uh, when you look at the past 12 months, yes, it's been by, bumpy up and down and this and that. But, you know, fed cattle this past week in Kansas and the South traded $1.86. Uh, up north in Nebraska, $1.88. They're headed for $1.90. And, you know, my good friends... Uh, uh, 
you know, that, that buy a lot of cattle from the processing side, we're headed for two and we're going to exceed two. And I realize that there's some input costs and there's challenges, but oh my, my, what opportunity do we have? You know, when you look at the money that quality beef has brought to the table for our industry, you know, when U.S. premium beef was started, we were in a battle with, with pork and poultry. Well, today, because of value-based marketing, because of, of people wanting our product, we have differentiated from those other proteins to where we truly have a product that consumers want, they want to pay for it, they're going to pay for it, and we're only going to get better. So join us on April 6th, 2024, 45th annual sale. We thank you so very much, each and every one of you are invited. Have a great day.